Hi everyone, I'm Allison, and today we're going to do a classic craft, coffee filter flowers. Now, a lot of people are using Keurigs these days, but you still might have some coffee filters hanging around your house, might be shoved in the back of a cabinet somewhere. If not, they're usually pretty inexpensive, um, and you can just get them at the grocery store on your weekly trip or your bi-weekly trip. Um, but the way coffee filters are made, they do some really cool stuff when you use washable marker on them. So these are some examples that I made up. So this one, I've got yellow and orange, and this one's got red and pink, and this one's got yellow and blue going on. So you can see once they dry, they're actually pretty sturdy and you can make up a whole bunch of these to do whatever you want with. If you happen to have some fuzzy stems hanging around, you can also get them stems. Um, but we're going to get started. Now you might want something to put under your coffee filter. A paper plate works really well or I'm going to use a piece of wax paper just so the marker doesn't go through. Now you're going to need coffee filters, washable markers, and a spritz bottle for this part, plus a stapler. Um, we're gonna do some tissue paper flowers in a minute, so you'll also need tissue paper and, oh, and you need scissors. I forgot, you definitely need scissors. So I like to use at least three to make a flower. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna pile three of these on top of each other. Oops, let me make sure I've only got three. The paper always feels a little weird. It's hard to tell how many you've got. All right, so I've got three in my hand, and I want to smush them really flat. And then I'm going to fold this in half, and in half again, and one more time. So now I've got this nice little pie shape. This might look familiar if you um, have done um, snowflakes before. Now if you want to, you can do one more time, um, but I have an easier time getting my scissors through the paper than if I only fold it this many times. Now if you're a younger artist, you might need a grown-up to help you with this part. If this is too thick for you, um, you can always take them apart and cut each um, coffee filter separately. But I'm going to do these all together and I'm going to cut the edges so that they look nice and frilly when we're done. Now you can do this a couple different ways. I'm going to do kind of a bumpy look, but you can also do almost like pointy shark teeth and that'll make a different look. You can make really long petals. You can do really tiny petals. Um, like I said, you can kind of do like a little shark tooth pattern. It'll make it look like different kinds of flowers, but I'm kind of going to go for just a ruffly carnation look here. So I'm going to cut some bumps out at the edge here. Try and keep them about the same size. And I'm going to try and remember to keep my folds Hey, I did a pretty good job. That's about the same size as the others. So I've got my little extras here. Let's put those away. All right, so you're gonna unfold your, ooh, that one came out really pointy. Let me fix that one up a little bit. The joys of art, sometimes you get surprised. All right, so that one's a little pointy and I'm betting, that one's not bad actually. No, didn't quite get all the way to the edge of the, filter though. They look a little chopped off so I'm just going to trim those up. All right so we've got our kind of daisy flowery looking shape now and get my scissors out of the way. So for each of these I am going to color. I think what I'm going to do is just color around. Now remember the middle is going to get mostly smushed up. So you don't have to put anything in the very middle. Um, things around the outside will be better, but in the interest of time, so that you're not sitting here forever while I'm drawing, I'm just gonna do a quick buzz here around the middle. With flowers, you generally want to go out from the middle in concentric circles. 
But if you just want to doodle all over it, that totally works. Um, just see what happens because something magical is going to happen with our marker marks in a minute. So let's see. Hmm, what color should the middle of my flower be? You know what? I'm going to go. Oops, wrong end. All right, so I'm going to make a lot of blue coming out from the middle here. And you don't have to be tidy with this. You don't even have to keep it even. You can make rainbow stripes if you want to. And like I said, the wax paper is just to keep, oh, you can kind of see there's a smooch blue there. Um, it is just to keep the marker off my table. So since these are washable markers, they usually come up pretty easy. But sometimes it's just better to not make a mess in the first place. All right, so we've got some blue there and I actually, what the heck, I'm gonna put some darker blue in the middle. Get a nice, And any kind of washable markers will work for this. These are just ones that I happen to have laying around. They're actually in pretty sorry shape, um, but they'll work. As long as it's water-based, that's what you need. Um, so anything that says water-based will work. Uh, so your, your standard kid marker pack will work. If you've got some nice grown-up markers, those will work too. Okay, so here's where the magic happens. I am going to take my little spray bottle full of water it's just normal water. And I'm gonna gently spray. You'll know it's the right amount of wet when the whole thing lays completely flat. And if we watch, oh, 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 we can see that the colors are starting to spread out. They're almost gonna look like watercolor in the end. It's really, really nifty. Now, I'm gonna let this one. I've actually got a uh, baking tray up here. Um, if you have a baking tray available, something that's wire mesh, or if you have somewhere where you can set your, um, set your coffee filters to dry, um, they do a lot better if you just leave them alone before we do the next part. So I'm gonna move this one now that we've seen, oh, oopsie, just makes a little bit of a mess. So I'm gonna leave this one right here and do the other two real quick. Oops, guess I should have done them all at once. That's okay though. It's not like I'm not using the same colors on all three. And you don't have to use the same colors on all three. Like I said, I am just going to make things go a little quicker. Plus I love blue. In case you haven't figured it out by now. I love blue. Oops. Paper's a little wet. That's okay. Like I said, you can do all kinds of experiments with these. You can do more filters. You can do fewer filters whatever you like. Right, there's that. I'm gonna get some darker blue in the middle. One that I really like to make with these is actually just to do yellow almost all the way to the edge and then give it a good spritz. They look really pretty when you're done. Um, same thing if you do um, pink just along the edge. Mm, they just look so pretty. All right, so we're going to put that aside for a second. And we're going to color this one. Then I'll give these guys a spritz. All right. 
Now I see, now I found the fastest way to color them. Pull towards me. <laughs> For most of my projects, I use alcohol-based markers um, because they blend differently. Well, I was like, hmm, I know I've got some washable markers around here somewhere. They were in the back of drawer, waiting, abandoned for many years. So the tips are in kind of soggy shape, but that's okay. They'll do their job. Right, so we've got that. And what? Oh, I keep doing that. I keep opening the wrong end of these. They have a small end and a big end, and I keep opening the little end. That won't do me much good. That's for writing. All right, where can I get? They kind of look like fireworks, don't they? I always enjoy doing these. They make me really happy. And another variant you can do with these you can use, now some people like to do it where one coffee filter is the top wings of the butterfly and one coffee filter is the bottom wings of the butterfly, but I actually like to do one that's the left and one that's the right. Um, you can take a spoon or a clothespin or just a fuzzy stem and you can actually turn these once you have your little watercolor things, you can actually make them into butterflies too. That, that's always super fun. But we are going to do flowers and these guys are going to get their magical water bath. That's that. Just give it a quick spritz and you will know when they've gotten enough water because the colors are going to start to move. All right, so this one looks pretty good. I'm going to move it to the baking sheet to dry. Got one of those wire cookie racks sitting just off camera. And we're going to spray this one. All right. Is that good and soggy? Excellent. All right. So we're going to leave these alone to dry. And while they're drying, I'm actually trying to get them so they don't touch each other too much and get their colors where they don't go because I'll totally do it. <laughs> All right, so while both are dry, I'm going to move this over, get some water off the table, and while they're drying, we are going to make, this doesn't even fit on the screen, it's so big, <laughs> we're going to make giant, giant tissue paper flowers. Now, as you can see, this doesn't fit on the screen very well. So I'm going to make a smaller one as an example, but you can totally make these with a full sheet of tissue paper that you have hanging out in the closet for gift time. And they make these enormous flowers. You can string them together to make a garland. You can put them all over the house just to be happy. Personally, I like to pull these out around the time of the Kentucky Derby and make ludicrous hats out of them um, and have a fashion show. That is super fun to do. Highly recommend it. Um, and I will tell you how to do that at the end here. Um, but so you can see gigantic, like this is a full, this is a full sheet of tissue paper. But we're gonna make a slightly smaller one so that you can see what the heck I'm doing. All right, so got some tissue paper and I cut one of these pieces of tissue paper into quarters. So I cut it in half and then in half again. So um, you're going to want to have six to eight pieces of tissue paper. So in this case, oh, hey, got water on my table. Whoopsie. So in this case, um, and if you want to do this, you can. I've got a couple of green pieces. So it looks like there's leaves hanging out underneath my blue flower. And then I've got, so I've got two of those, and then I've got six little sheets of blue tissue paper. And square is good. If they're a little bit rectangular, it doesn't matter. Just make sure they're all going the same way and they're lined up pretty good. I'm gonna make sure that I've got all my edges lined up on one side 
because we are going to fold these. We are going to do the yield fold fan fold. Ugh. Yield fold fan? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Sometimes I say funny things. Okay. So I've got my edges all lined up here on the blues, and then I've got my green lined up. All right, so now you're going to go take one inch. Oh, I'm going to push these up here a little bit. My baking sheet is slowly sliding down. There we go. Okay, so you're going to fold these. A reasonable distance, like an inch, the quarter of an inch. Um, with the big flowers, I definitely recommend an inch or two in width. So I'm going to get a fold about an inch wide here. And not all your edges are going to line up the same. That's fine. I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to go back the other way. Now you can see I'm starting to get a little fan fold going. So just flipping it. And folding. And you're just going to go all the way across. Do, 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 do. Now as you go along, your folds are probably, you can probably see, my folds are totally getting bigger. Watch out for that, <laughs> or you'll end up with really, really giant folds at one end. So I'm actually going to fix that a little bit. Sometimes when you're trying to see where you're folding, you end up making it a little too big. Now, if you've eyeballed it right, you should end up with both of these end ones pointing the same direction. But you don't have to. If one's pointing up and one's pointing down, like if I had, this one had flapped up and this one was flapped down, that's fine. It's totally fine. I totally just knocked over my giant, giant <laughs> flower. It flopped over. It was just too big for where I put it. it just slid off the table. All right, so we've got our lovely little thing. We're going to find the middle of our fun little accordion of flowerage. Our accordion blossom. And you're going to find the metal. And this is where a stapler comes in handy. If you don't have a stapler, a tie works okay. But a stapler definitely works better. And make sure the staple goes all the way through on both sides. So Got our happy little fan, we've got a staple in it. Now it is time to make our flower. So you're gonna wanna open these up gently. By the way, in this next part, be really, really gentle. If you grab at the ends and yoink, you're totally gonna rip off part of your, oh, I didn't cut it yet. Silly me, there we go. But like I said, you're totally going to rip your flowers. So be very gentle here in a minute. Definitely want our scissors. And I'm going to make pointy. I'm going to make pointy petals this time because I can. All right. So you're going to cut a shape into the end of each end of your fan. Like I said, you can, like last time, we can make rounded ends that are just really short just to make a little ruffle. That's pretty much what I did with the giant uh, tissue paper flower. Or you can make long pointy ones like I'm doing. Um, I'm cutting these pretty far down so that the petals will be very long and flappy, more like for chrysanthemum than a carnation. Um, or you can do whatever you want. Have fun with it. These are always entertaining. You can always play with these later. I have a box that is just paper scraps because you yeah, never know when you're going to need some. All right, so 
Now we've got our little accordion with our lovely petal end, and you're gonna wanna spread this open. And I like to start with one side and then go to the other. If you wanna do a layer and then a layer and then a layer, totally can. Um, just like I said, be gentle. So what you're gonna wanna do is get your fingers under one of your petals on that first layer and then get a fold and gently pull each fold and a gently peel. Now, when you've cut, um, since I've cut these really far down, I have to be careful not to rip the petals apart from each other. But if you're patient, totally worth it because it's super fun. All right, so you're gonna peel until it's sticking straight up in the middle. See how that's kind of sticking straight up right there? All right, so I'm gonna keep doing that. Like I said, I'm gonna try and grab folds rather than the ends of petals so that I don't rip anything. I kind of like to make a peeling motion to get everything as far to the middle as possible if I can. But you can see what works for you. Some people just like to like very lightly floof them. And as you go down, it's gonna get a little easier to fry them up because you've got less paper to work with. Now, if you're making a smaller one like this, it's gonna be a little more difficult to pull them up than it will be with a big one. Um, if you're making one with a full sheet of tissue paper, those are actually pretty easy to open because <laughs> you've got a lot of paper um, and it's not so stuck here in the middle. The ends are not so close to the middle. It's a lot easier to peel them apart. Ooh, we got kind of like a water lily going. I like it. Like I said, can you tell I like blue? All right. So, with the end here, you might have to pull back a little bit to get the top layers to go up. And get this last blue layer. And now this is where you can see, since I'm making a small one, um, eight layers is gonna be really floofy. Um, I probably could have done six. And oh, I gotta pry apart my, my cute little leaves here at the bottom. All right, pull those this way. And I'm gonna squish that. So now you can see half of it looks like a flower, and half of it is still paper. So now I'm gonna do the other half, but I'm gonna try and blend my layers in as I go. So when I pull up this first layer, I'm going to kind of tuck it in with this first layer um, and you'll see what I mean. Once again, you're going to flip this open and kind of gently get your fingers in there. Try not to rip anything. And this is why some people like to do like the first layer on both sides and loop them together. And then some people just like to do one side and the other. I think it's easier to see what's going on if you do one side than the other. You can see I'm just kind of making this weird peeling motion now. I've made a lot of these. They're a very fun project. And I've, I've done a few of those. Uh, done a few funny derby events. So let's just leave it at that. Who doesn't love to wear a funny hat? All right, so I'm gonna, so see, I'm gonna flip up a little bit on this side, and then I'll start flipping this one up. Get those mixed in right there. very, very clearly. 
And that's super fun. Peel this side up. Blend this side in. All right. Just keep gently pulling. You can see I'm kind of tucking the first group a little bit into the second group so that they, so it doesn't look like two separate bands of petals because otherwise it looks like two halves of a flower instead of one big flower. So you just kind of, kind of mix it up a little bit. That's all. All right. It's not like it's a problem if that happens. You just kind of gotta move your petals all around, but I just think it looks better if you do it this way. But heck, if you want to, poofs, go for it. That might actually look really neat. All right, get our leaves here. What's this called again? I think they're called sepals instead of petals. The little, little green bits at the bottom of a flower. The part that covered it up when it was a bud. All right, so now look at this lovely floofy water lily lotus thing we've got. It might be a chrysanthemum. I don't know. It is a really pretty paper flower. So if it's too straight up and down for you, if you want to kind of gently pull on your, make sure you don't pull them all apart and rip them though. You want to just gently pull on your petals until they go the way you want them to. You can totally do that, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, now, if you do have a fuzzy stem pipe cleaner thing, you can find where your middle was. This is actually easier to do before you floof your flower out. Ooh, I don't know if I can get it in there now. I made it so floofy, I don't know if I can get it in. Oh, there we go. I found the middle. So you can wrap this around your fan before you open so that you're not struggling like I am right now. I did it earlier with the big one and that's, uh, but that was the big one. That was the big one. Anyway, you can totally put this, wrap the stem around the middle of your, oh, oh, I found it. <laughs> I found the other side. Should be able to get it in here. So this is what happens when you've done something so many times that you forget steps. Aha! Got it. All right, so I've got the fuzzy stem threaded through here. And you literally can just twist it on. And then you've got a nice stem. And if you've messed up where your flower goes together because you were trying to put a fuzzy stem in the middle, just like I said, gently push things around until it hides the fuzzy stems again. Um, but now you have a stem for your flower and you can do funny things like hang them up or my favorite is to, to make a funny hat. You can take a small paper plate and stick the fuzzy stems through them and then put some yarn on it and stick it on your head. Or my favorite is to take a headband of any type and just wrap the fuzzy stem around it. If you don't have a fuzzy stem, you do have some string. You can tie that around the middle of your fan and then you'll still be able to attach it to things. So I'm just wrapping this around my headband a couple of times. And now I have a hilarious flower on my head. 
I can't even get in the frame. <laughs> but yeah, so now I have this hilarious flower on my head and it's totally going to stay there. I feel like Frida Kahlo would approve. So now our, our coffee filters should be dry enough. They're not quite dry, but they're gonna be dry enough for the next part. So you're gonna grab your coffee filters, which as you can see, they have exploded with beautiful color. Ah, yeah, that one's a little drier. Got a couple extra minutes. Okay, so you're gonna stack up your coffee filters. And I like to try and stagger them just a little bit so that the petals look nice and overlapped. So you are going to pinch them in the very middle. And you are gonna kind of do what we did earlier, that fold in half and fold in half, but don't worry about it being perfect. You just kind of want it to go like this. We'll do it one more time. And again, if you have a stapler, this will really come in handy. You can just do it right at the bottom. I don't know if you can see the staple there, but make sure it goes all the way through. So now you've got a little floof. And since these are pretty, still pretty wet, you would really want to wait until they are dry and crunchy again. Um, mine are not, but we're still going to do this. If yours are not dry and crunchy, again, be very gentle. You are going to open your, very soggy, <laughs> flower up like we just did our other flower. Trying to very gently peel one flower up again in the middle. Basically, you want them to all ruffle separately. So you're going to want to pull this one to the middle and then this one to the middle. And then this one. So now you should have this little nubbin, little nubbin sticking out, and a very, in this case, a very carnation looking flower sitting there. And if you have a fuzzy stem, you're going to, I literally just pinch it on here and wrap it around the little nub that has the staple in it. You just twist it around until it makes that little part at the bottom of a flower that holds the bud. And now if yours is still very wet right now, just kind of make it as floofy as you can without ripping it and then let it dry overnight. And then it will be a nice floofy crunchy coffee filter flower. These are really fun to make and give to people when, uh, you know, they don't know and they can't care for um, live flowers or just because they're fun and they never ever die. Uh, like I said, you can put them all over the house. You could make a flower crown. That's always super fun. You could make, you could encourage your fun flower hat. Um, you could read a little bit about Frida Kahlo. You could read a little bit about Georgia O'Keeffe and her love of painting giant flowers and see what you can come up with. So this is our lovely project where we've got coffee filter flowers and tissue paper flowers. I want to see what you make. So if you could hit us up on Facebook or Instagram, if you go to MarietaCobbArtMuseum.org, you can find all our social media. And thank you so much for tuning in. I'll see you in a couple of